All right, I'm going to call this the Mr. Anger Crash Course on Trigonometry. <laughs> and I'm teaching this because in math page 1089, which is pre-algebra, on pages 41 through 46, it's all about sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, I have to be honest with you, I've been teaching Saxon math for a lot of years, and we don't even introduce trigonometry until halfway through Algebra 2. Um, but I think we'll just cover it real basic, and I think you should be able to get to at least what this pace is covering. I'm also teaching this in, in kind of the way I teach it to my students. And uh, so even a student using a different curriculum theoretically could watch this video and, uh, and be helped by it. Let me talk about, um, first of all, if we take a, and this is very important, this we're talking about right triangles. So trigonometry is always and only right triangles. And so you remember that the long side across from the right angle is always called the hypotenuse. Now there's two other sides, and in Pythagorean's theorem, we just call them legs, okay, or the other sides. <clears throat> but when we come to trigonometry, those sides become, um, we have to give them a name to keep straight, which is which. And so these two sides are in relation to an angle Okay, so I always tell my students, pretend like you're standing in a triangular shaped room. That'd be a weird room, okay, but it's concrete walls and it's triangular shaped and you're standing in this corner. Now this longest wall is the hypotenuse and you can reach out and touch that wall. That's the hypotenuse. The other wall that you can reach out and touch is called the adjacent side, okay? It's adjacent. Adjacent means it's touching you. Now the side on the other side of the room that you can't touch, right? You're touching two sides, hypotenuse and adjacent. The other wall is the opposite side. So it's important to keep those terms clear in your mind and they're relative to where you're standing in the triangle. Now, in this particular math pace, they try to be consistent in always drawing the right angles to look like this, okay? But in other textbooks and uh, maybe later on in other problems, they might turn the triangle around or have it situated in a different way. And so these are not always right and bottom, okay? It's always relative to the angle. Now, let's talk about <clears throat> something, and that is that the ratio of the sides is always the same for a given degree angle. Let me illustrate this. If I drew a 14 degree angle, okay, and um, this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent, what would be the ratio of the opposite over adjacent? Well, you can see it'd be one fourth. Now, we usually express that as a decimal, so 0.25 would be the decimal. So but I want you to look at this triangle. This is a much bigger triangle, longer sides, but the angle is still 14 degrees. So notice the opposite side is now five and the adjacent side is 20. So now think about this. What would be the ratio of the opposite over the adjacent? it would be one-fourth or 0.25, okay? So for every time we have a 14-degree angle, the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent is always going to be 0.25, no matter how small or how big the triangle is, no matter what country it's located in, no matter you know, no, any other factor. If it's 14 degrees, that ratio will always be the same. Now, using Pythagorean's theorem, I did some quick math with my calculator and found that the hypotenuse is 4.123 if this is 14 degrees, and this side is 1 and this side is 4, okay? So again, I could figure out what the opposite 1 over the hypotenuse, 4.123, would be. And if I divided that, I would get a decimal. It would be a little different than 0.25 but it would be exactly the same decimal as if I took five and divided by 20.616, all right? So mathematicians have determined that these ratios are so important that they wanna give them names. And these are uh, Greek words, sine, 
cosine and tangent. And if you have a calculator that has some of the, you might see the cos, cos, sin, and tan as keys on there wondering, what is that? Well, now, that's, this is what it is. All right, we're getting into it here. So, in fact, let's try this. Take your calculator. Now, I have a smartphone with an app, and uh, so I have a calculator on my app here. But if I take 14 degrees and I hit tangent, okay, I get 0.249. Well, that's pretty close to 0.25, okay? So the tangent of 14 degrees is 0.249. And uh, let me try the, co the sine. So 14 degrees, and then if I hit the sine is 0.242. Well, that would be the same as taking the opposite, 1 divided by 4.123. Yep, 0.243. So the sine is, by definition, the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Okay? The cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and you get a decimal number. And then the tangent, which is the one we were kind of talking about over here, opposite over adjacent. One divided by four, you know, we got 0.25. That's the definition of tangent. So again, if you did the tangent of 14 on your calculator, basically you're going to get 0.25. Now, this is so important that we remember these are just three of them. So that's it, just three relationships. And it's so important that we keep this straight, that we need to memorize these uh, relationships. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So notice... I highlighted the first letter of each word. Now, to help you memorize this, I'm going to tell you a little story. All right? You ready? <clears throat> so on this farm, there was a barn and had some horses. And uh, one day, this really old gray mare, which she ain't what she used to be, but she's wearing, she's got a gray mare, and she's got a hat on, a straw hat to keep the sun off her head. And she meandered into the barn to get out of the hot sun. <gasps> and there in the barn was another horse who wasn't supposed to be in there. And that horse was eating some of the oats that the farmer had for the horses. And that first horse got so upset, the old horse, that she ran out of the barn, went and found the farmer, nudged him, kind of grabbed on the shirt, pulled him into the barn, and that old horse told the farmer that she caught another horse taking oats away, and the farmer dealt with that horse. And uh, so the moral of the story is some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. All right, so say it with me this time and watch the pattern S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -O -H -H Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. You just keep saying it until you're saying it in your sleep. You wake up in the morning and mom asks you at breakfast, what was that thing about the horse? Oh, yeah, some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. And I'm serious. As you get on in your math and you remember that little saying and then you're trying to do a problem with cosine, you're trying to think, oh, cosine. What was cosine? Caught another horse. Oh, yeah, adjacent over hypotenuse. Or you're trying to think tangent. I always get tangent mixed up. What was it? Was it adjacent over opposite away? Okay, taking oats away. Oh, yeah, taking oats away. All right? And so you get the right sequence. Now, you've been watching my videos long enough to know about the magic triangles, I hope. If not, let me introduce it real quick. The magic triangle says that for any relationship, it could be distance equals rate times time. 
Okay, it could be density equals mass divided by volume. So for anything that has three quantities, we can plug into the magic triangle. In this case, I'm going to put sine down here, opposite, and hypotenuse. Now, the reason I did it this way is in this, we have a numerator and a denominator. So the numerator always has to go on the top. The denominator goes on the bottom. And then the other thing, the other um, quantity that's part of the formula also goes on the bottom. Now this is important because if I'm solving to find the sign, which is a decimal, I'm going to take the opposite and divide by hypotenuse, and I get a decimal number, okay? But this is also important because if I want to find what the opposite side is, now watch this, I could cover up opposite, and I'll cross multiply. So if I know the angle is 14 degrees, and I can use my calculator and say sine of 14 degrees times side by sides so or multiplying times whatever the length of the hypotenuse is, okay? And that will give me the length of the opposite side. I know this sounds complicated, but uh, maybe as you uh, move through the examples in the pace and then you come back and watch this video again, maybe it'll click a little better, all right? This is all new. Again, I'm surprised that in halfway through pre-algebra and like eighth grade level, we are doing <laughs> trigonometry, but we are, so here we are. If I wanted to find the length of the hypotenuse, I would cover that up, take the length of the opposite side, which would be given, and I could divide by the decimal number that represents the sine of the angle. All right, let's see how we're using this. Um, on page 43, for instance, okay? I'm looking here at problem number three, and we have an angle, and we know that the angle is 29 degrees, and this says that this is x, and this is 4, and we want to solve to find x. Okay, how are we going to do that? We notice that this is the opposite, and we know this is the hypotenuse, okay, relative to angle 29. And so looking at these three, we have to use this one to solve to find the unknown hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the magic triangle here, and I'm going to plug in 4 for the opposite. H is the unknown, so I'm going to put H there. That's what we don't know. Or let's, let's use X. That's what they have. And then we have 29, sine 29. So I'm going to use my calculator here. Plug in 29, hit the sign key, and it comes up with 0.4848. All right, 0.4848 is what goes in there. So how do I solve to find this? This is on the top. This one's on the bottom. So I'm going to take 4 and divide by 0.4848 equals... And then we get the answer of 8.25. Okay? And again, you need to use a calculator for these. All right, if you don't have a calculator that has sine, cosine, and tangent, you need to sit in front of your computer. I'm sure there's a, you can access a, a calculator there or uh, find a calculator maybe on your parent's smartphone or whatever. But you, you have to use a calculator in order to do these kinds of problems. All right? So throughout uh, that page, and then when we get to uh, page 44, they're having you solve for the adjacent uh, side. Nope, it's opposite again, but they've redrawn the angle. So now they might have the angle up here, and um, you're still solving for, in this case, maybe the opposite. So I'm looking here on page 44. They have one that this is 61 degrees. And they say this is 10, and they want us to solve for x, okay? So let's plug in here and see what happens. If I'm standing here in 61, then x is opposite from me. It's across from me. So that's what's going to go on the top. The hypotenuse is 10. That goes down here. And then on the calculator... 
I need to put in 61 and hit the sign because opposite over hypotenuse, some old horse, okay, opposite over hypotenuse, and that gives me 0 0.8746. 0 0.8746. Now, because I'm solving for the opposite, I need to take this number, which is on the bottom, times the 10, which is on the bottom, and so I get 8. 0.746, and maybe in the score key they have it rounded off to 8.75, but anyways, that's how they got that, okay, round, did they tell you, oh, they tell you to round off to the nearest hundredths place, okay, so we would round this off to 0.75, all right, then you get to page 45 and 46, we're doing a similar thing, but that time is with cosine, so they actually start with tangent, and then they go to sine, then they go to cosine, and uh, for all of them, we can use this magic triangle. When you're doing the cosine, we would just plug in cosine here, and then we're going to do adjacent here, and then hypotenuse on the bottom if it's cosine. So let's say the little jingle again. Can you remember it? Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. All right, hopefully that helps. And then uh, it's important to know all three of them because when you get to the um, checkup, they, uh, it's not broken up into sections. They have, all, they have all three of them all mixed together on the same checkup. Since this is your first time encountering this, uh, parents, I, I would encourage them to put all of this on a cue card, okay? and have that available. I mean, ideally, we, they should memorize it at some point, but this has a lot to cover in just a couple of days, and then to all of a sudden have on the checkup self-test, base test. So if you put it on a cue card, and uh, even put these magic triangles on there, and then have that available and use that while you're doing the checkup, self-test, and base test, and I think that will uh, prepare you, and, and you should be successful, I hope, all right?